God of the universe, maker of the stars, who am I that you would know my name? Welcome back again to Life on Purpose. It's the 26th episode, and we're so excited to get this thing going again. And you got me, Dave. You got Ryan. You got Daniel. And you got Michael. You just, you've seen us. You love us. As even wherever <laughs> or age thing you find that you can relate to, whatever uh, style that you just can just really grasp to all hold of. We're just excited that you're here. You're listening to us because I think we got something really uh, special planned for you today. But we got to get some things out of the way. So we're at, you might be have able to chance to see us live in person. So I know kind of what's crazy is next week. It's real, it's real fast. It's put together real quick, but we're going to be in Cleveland, Tennessee and one in Messiah. And I, if you go follow us on Facebook at Exodus Road Band, I think Michael's posted it. I think a bunch of other people posted it of where it's going to be at. But if you do not know, since it's kind of last minute, I'm going to tell you the address right here. 3535 Atkinson Drive, A-D-K-I-S-S-O-N, in Cleveland, Tennessee. We're going to be in the gymnasium. We're going to have an amazing time. It's 11 a.m. to whenever they decide to kick us out. So it's going to be <laughs> awesome. We're going to be worshiping at Exus Road Band. We'll have Mike have a teaching. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time. So if you're in the area, please come see us. Please come see us. It's going to be awesome. So. Go. With yeah, that, be there or be square, which I am. I will be the square one, so I'm sorry yeah. I will not be there, unfortunately. But yeah. I wish I could be, and I know that uh, it's a very capable hands with you three. So anybody that goes is going to be incredibly blessed, as usual. Yes, yeah. Well, we're gonna miss you, Daniel. Yeah, for those who are gonna up. miss Daniel, well, you know, um, he'll be with us in April, God willing. That's right. Yes. I will. In, uh, right. Wilkesboro, North Carolina. So looking forward mm -hmm. to that one. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, guys, after I leave you, I'm actually not coming back home right away. I'm heading north. I'm going to Nashville, Tennessee for Ooh. the okay. Hyavel Israel night. So mm, nice. anybody that's up in Nashville area, uh, they're going to also have one in Dallas, one in Houston. Uh, Josh Waller, uh, Luke Hilton, nice. the Israel guys, and um, mm -hmm. also Nati Ram, good friend of uh, Daniel's mind from Nati. Israel. Yep. And Very we're awesome. even going to let Tommy Waller do a little speaking. <laughs> uh oh. Beware. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. So that's going to be good. Hey, I got something that uh, I, I know that you guys I, I sent something, but. Um, you know, we had a great, I thought we had a, a wonderful show last week and uh, mm -hmm. talking about a young man who has become very special in my life over the last week. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's just been a week. But, um, uh, you know, we talked last week about the lost coin. Mm -hmm. And uh, the funny thing is that after this, the, what I'm going to tell you transpired, um, I looked at my wife and I said, uh, cause this'll, this'll be 30 years of ministry this year for me. And I said, uh, do you ever in 30 years, remember me speaking on the, la the lost coin? She said, no, <laughs> I, I had never mm -hmm. taught on that parable at all in my life. And, um, so we, you know, we, t we did the broadcast last week about, uh, talked about the lost coin and the young man that I had uh, met the week before uh, that just a couple of days prior to. And, um, the next morning I got a, a text from him and it said, uh, you may not know this about me, but I'm a collector of coins. <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's so awesome. You know, isn't it amazing yeah. guys, the, 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 the father will literally move heaven and earth mm -hmm. to, yeah. to look at one person. If we could get a hold of this, if people out there could get a hold of this, yeah. that the father himself, the creator of the universe, the one that spoke in, in, in everything became, he will move heaven and earth for you. What do you think about that? I mean, it, explain that to me. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sun, moon, and earth. Yeah. He will he will explain he he will 
move heaven and earth. We had a little internet connect uh, lost there, which was really hilarious. I'm going to edit part of that out. I shouldn't because it was too funny. Um, but uh, he will move heaven and earth just for one person. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, he will. Yes, that's right. Leaving the ninety nine to go after the one. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it actually Not just happens. The, I mean, it's just seeing like a with the degree of passion that he goes after the one too like it's it's not just that he went after this young man it's not just that he showed him the truth but he knitted together this whole story this whole tapestry just to produce this one moment where we're talking about this parable and he had just given his life over and here it's it's a parable that could not have been more applicable to this one person what are the, some some stat status uh, statistic person ishin tell me what the actual odds of that would be they are i'm sure astronomically just not able to happen scientific term there there you go <laughs> right very very highly unlikely you're right there you go to say it simply highly unlikely there we go <laughs> Yeah, if you can believe in that, you could probably believe in evolution. <laughs> Good point. It takes a lot of faith. Yeah. Lot that of faith. it does. <laughs> well, guys, I got a question so, for you. Yes. What do what does a lost sheep, a lost coin, a prodigal son, and a fish in the sea have in common? Mm. I don't know. They, is this the start of a cheesy joke or is this a real question? <laughs> it's a real question. <laughs> yeah. Prodigal son, a lost coin, fish in the sea. And a lost sheep, yeah. And a lost sheep. Well, they were well, all they're... lost, essentially, okay. other yes. than maybe the fish, but they were all lost. They were all away from where they should have been. And mm -hmm. they might be a little dirty. Mm hmm. Could it could it be that they all have to be brought in the boat before they can be cleaned? Hmm. Yes. I mean, it depends on how lost the sheep is. If you find the sheep at sea, <laughs> then uh... <laughs> <laughs> we got a problem. <laughs> that one. I mean, that one really, really went out of the way to run away. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's an aquatic sheep. Yeah. It, it was kind of like a mud pile, a mud hole. <laughs> mud. Yeah. Hole. I'm I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking. I don't know if y'all have ever seen those videos about um about animals uh, not doing what they're usually supposed to do, and they do things that are hilariously funny. And there was this one video I remember seeing that it was a uh, I'm pretty sure it was a lamb. It had got himself so stuck in a hole in the ground that the rancher had to actually get on all fours go in head first while someone was holding on to the legs to actually pull them out of the hole. That's the picture in my head of this lost sheep like, idea. I okay. was like, you know, yeah, you're gonna be pretty filthy dirty. And mm -hmm. You'll be getting a little dirty as well when yeah. you're trying to pull it out. Yeah. Okay. It was uh, th that last part there where you said, you know, put them in the boat before they get cleaned. Was that uh, partially a little play on words there? Yeah. Yeah. Really kind of is that you're talking about saying the reason I ask is because um, I was having this conversation with someone recently of, you know, the somewhat controversial statement that I think we made on here recently of, you know, God doesn't care where you were yesterday right. or this morning, just what he is today. Yeah. And um, I had this I had this vision in my head of, you know, Yeshua teaching. It's the 5000, let's say. And they start to gather and, you know, all 5,000 are there. And Yeshua says, listen, guys, I know all of you want to hear what I have to say. But if you are not observant of the Torah, if you are unclean in any way, I'm going to need you to go ahead and go. Like, this is only for, you know, my people to listen to. The most ridiculous thing you can imagine, right? No, anybody that wanted to come was welcome mm -hmm. to come and to hear. And whether that's outside or in a building, you know, that's something for us to kind of consider um, as far as how we think about welcoming people. And when I had this conversation with someone, they told me that saying, which I had never heard before, which I'm sure is very old, of before you can clean the fish, you have to get it in the boat. Mm. Mm. I like that. 
Yeah, that was actually your mother yeah, so that said that, quoting like, me at it, Life Assembly la two weeks ago. Oh. <laughs> That's right. You're just, you're just hey. full of those little clever one-liners, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. They didn't just start yesterday. So yeah, you have to clean a fish. So Daniel, what you're saying to me is that Yeshua didn't walk around and check to see how people were tying their zit zit before he talked to them? I, you know, I don't think he was. I really, just a feeling I have. Hmm. Just yeah. a feeling. Just a is, feeling. It, is it more than a feeling? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Way to go, Ryan. And and was he not asking, okay, now how do you pronounce the name before I'll talk to you? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, and let's mm. take it, let's take it, you know, further. Um have you he wasn't asking, have you stolen anything today? Mm. Let's go there. Mm-hmm. Did did he stop to ask uh, the Samaritan woman what her, you know, nighttime rituals were? Nope. He knew them all already, and that wasn't a roadblock for him to reveal himself as the Messiah and her Savior. He didn't ask I for like a report that. from the tax collector before he called him to be his disciple. Nope. Nope. I like the line. It was never a roadblock for him. That's that's a way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. oh, so guys, man. where where are we going with this? Give, give me where hmm. where am I where am I going with this? You tell me. Hmm. I think uh, to there's... me. Oh, go for oh, it. Oh man, <laughs> that's someone else. Someone else. Ryan. Dave. Okay. Ryan. Uh, <laughs> I I actually lost my train of thought now. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think the um, it comes down to it, it doesn't matter. He is no respecter of men. Mm -hmm. so he doesn't he doesn't care about your history before he you know i mean look well shoot let's look at paul or saul as he was at that time you know what i mean mm -hmm. what a character mm -hmm. <laughs> to put it mildly mm -hmm. you know yeah. and so often uh, in our time it's uh you know what do they say perception is nine tenths of the law mm -hmm. right so we go and we perceive somebody Oh, you know, well, this person is dressed this way or this person, you know, drives this kind of car or whatever, has this kind of haircut, whatever. And we assume this is what their beliefs must be. This is what their actions must be. This must be how God sees them. And so we like to look through our own lenses instead of through the fathers. It actually reminds me of, uh, and Mike, you mentioned this in your tabernacle teaching. Mm. And we actually read about it in this last Torah portion. The laver that's mm -hmm. lined in the bottom with mirror. So that when you go and you're looking through that blood stained water, you're seeing your reflection, but you're seeing it through the blood. So that's the way the father sees you through the Messiah. Wow. So it's a reminder is every time that was powerful for me when you told me that. Yeah. I think that's I something that. big to remember. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, the father sees the diamond in the rough. He sees the dusty coin. He sees the, you know, pig slop covered prodigal son. Mm -hmm. And instead of seeing the stuff on the outside, he sees the value that's on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he loves us as we are, not as we should be, but he loves us so much that he will not let us stay as we are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or that idea, like we talked about last time, the idea of he sees what you will become. He already, he's already, knowing that from that diamond, like you said, diamond in the rough, he knows the kind of precious jewel you can be with just a little bit, just a little bit of cleaning, just a little bit. It can just turn into such a brilliant, bright diamond. And at any given point in our lives, we could consider that we are that one. We were that one out of a hundred mm -hmm. sheep. We were that one out of a 10 coins. Mm -hmm. We were that prodigal son. And that's why it's important to not burn the bridges to our past, but to remember, to remember where we came from, what we're saved from. Because if we stop remembering what we were brought out of, then it no longer, it, it, it eliminates our ability to see people as we once were. 
And if we lose that ability, then we start viewing people through pharisaical eyes that they need to be performing everything to a T and perfectly to the, you know, just mm. every single I dotted, every single T crossed. And there's just so many regulations before you can even enter in that you just, you never even get close. And so Ryan, I, I was thinking along the same lines that it's about shifting our perspective and how we view people and seeing them not as, as we see them, but as, as God sees them, which is what we're talking about that, mm -hmm. you know, the dusty coin that can be cleaned off. Um, yeah. No, that's true. And this wasn't just an issue that's just happening now. We we see it in Acts, how they were like, well, how do we deal with all these people that are now saying, hey, this is amazing. This is following this Messiah. This Messiah is real, and it's so incredible. And then they're like, well, how do they how do they actually come to the temple? How do we allow these things? How, how do we go about this? And then gate then there's this term gatekeeping, right? The idea of, no, we're, you can't come in here because like what you were listing, Daniel, well, you have to have this, you have to have this. And there's like, well, wait, there's a point where we have to have this allowance of in love accepting. And then, okay, now there's some foundational things that now you need to learn in order to then shed off the stuff that you've learned over your past that has now gotten you to the mess that you're in now. Okay. Now there's some foundational things you need to go through to fix so that you can, and you'll see how God works in those areas. If I, if I may be so bold to say it in that way, it might be a little bit more eloquent way to say it. But so is is the tragedy sometimes that, uh, and this goes beyond just messianic and and to synagogues and mm. to churches and wherever that uh, you know you go from being that lost sheep, that lost coin, that prodigal son, and then all of a sudden you only hang out with shiny coins. You only hang out with shampooed sheep. You only hang out, that's a new statement. Uh, you only <laughs> hang out with those who are part of the household. Um, you'd no longer hang around anybody that has dirt upon them. And so as, as one of you just said a little bit ago, maybe we lose track. I think it was Daniel. You said uh, we kind of lose track of who we used to be. And when we do mm. that, we kind of, you know, set this wall around us. Well, I, you know, I've, I've had the dirt on me before and I don't want it there again. So I'm just going to not be around dirty coins anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow. And I think it can happen for a very, uh, a varying, varying reasons. You know, maybe one of them is just that forgetfulness of not remembering where we came from. Maybe another one is a fear that we will lose our cleanliness somehow. We're so, if a person was insecure in the way the father cleaned them up, if they were insecure in the relationship with the father that saved them as they, they tracked her away from the 99, then there would be that following based upon fear and not upon faith and joy. You know, one mm. will lead to one will lead to the spreading of joy. One will lead to, you know, being the leper who is told not to go tell anyone. And yet he goes and tells everyone, you know, that's one of them where the God, where God heals him. And he did just, just the overflowing joy. But the other one is, you know, I just got cleansed from my leprosy and I don't know, maybe I shouldn't go anywhere because maybe it'll come back. Mm -hmm. uh, just, mm -hmm. you know, that, those, you know, that, that, that caught me. You know, we talked about this, I know, a few episodes back about that concept of fear, like you're you're going after their day, like mm -hmm. that idea of fear, you're insecure. And I, I think that no one is telling you that, okay, now that you let's just take an example, uh, you've just you finally gotten sober, you finally quit. And oh, now, now you got to go now you got to go in a bar and try to get people. Of course, there's a balance of figuring out time, but don't let that ever stop you. If the opportunity arises to actually go, in a sense, dig out the sheep out of the hole where you were once before, because he might be doing the same thing with you. It's, of course, a balance of time. But if you find out yourself that you're just really comfortable, like Mike, you said, within your place, within just wanting to hang around the shiny coins, God has a funny way of bringing dirty coins along your path to see what you do. 
<laughs> I know from experience. I think everyone can attest to that. Yeah, I love that. Mm-hmm. Right, Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, it, 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 this this whole this whole thing. I I uh, I just think you had something to go with there before I make another statement. Oh no! Well, I was um, when you kind of when we were talking about the sort of the idea of this episode, the verse that came to mind was actually in Daniel, mm-hmm. uh, and it was with the looking at these the men that were thrown into the furnace, uh-huh. and so basically, you know, they they go in. They're essentially going through a form of of hell, we'll say, right? And it says when they come out, the fire had not done anything to them. Their hair wasn't singed. Their garments looked the same as before. And they didn't even smell like fire. And I I began to think about this, like, to go back with what Daniel was saying. I think sometimes we're afraid to hang out around people because, like you said, oh, you know, it may rub off on us this way or we may be perceived a certain way by uh, mm-hmm. oh well this he hangs out with those people you know what I mean um, don't be afraid of that you're mm-hmm. there you're in that fire for a reason and you're not going to come out smelling like it if that makes sense okay wow. yeah I knew you had something to say because uh, <laughs> because you just nailed it for me so if he was hanging out with the publicans whatever publicans are uh the sinners he's going after lost sheep lost coins and prodigal sons if we want to truly meet him that's where he's going to be mm-hmm. that's right yeah that's right did not come to the, the doctor don't need the the, the healthy don't need the doctor the sick do yeah mm-hmm. so if we want to really meet him at his heart wh- where coming. we're going to find him oh man is with those people that nobody else wants to hang around. Mm. That's right. That's God's exactly the right. Business of gathering, and so if you wanna if you wanna see him, try it out, and you'll find out. <laughs> right? You'll you'll end up finding out. Like, oh, this is where God is. This is where it is. Wow, that's a that's a that's that's really neat. That's really cool. You know, there's, I got a story of my own life. It, this happened last week, actually. Uh, yeah, I, I play golf sometimes with, uh, with a men's group. Uh, it's kind of, a, it's been kind of a ministry thing. And uh, on Thursday mornings, when I'm going to be playing with this men's league on Thursdays, uh, I will pray that the father teams me up with who he wants me to be teamed up with. And um, it's been really funny because uh, most every week, I get teamed up with a guy whose mouth is, um, well, let's just say that if he if he makes a putt or doesn't make a putt, if he makes a good shot or a bad shot, it's the same word coming out of his mouth on any of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. yeah, and um, so and the funny, th- the cr- strange thing, I, I guess it's not funny, is he tells me because he knows I'm in ministry, so he tells me that he is. Uh, he is a, um, an elder at one of these social churches in town. Mm. And, and it's like, uh, and I don't even want to be around the guy because, you know, here's this guy that's, that says he goes to church and, and the, this vile stuff kind of comes out of his mouth. And it's like last Thursday. Yeah. He's teamed up with me. It's like, really God. <laughs> and then we went through 18 holes and he, and he the what he started saying all day was fire truck. Hmm. He there was not a word of profanity that came out of his mouth. That's and every awesome. time I looked over, he's looking, he's he's standing there wanting to talk to me. It's uh-huh. like, you know, sometimes you wonder, can can I really make a difference in a person's life? And then the father puts you face to face with somebody that Maybe you are making a, you know, and that wouldn't happen if I'd have just, you know, made sure that I was never on the same team with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'll give people a challenge. Start praying that the whoever the father, start praying that those who seek you will find you. Mm-hmm. Now that's a dangerous prayer, <laughs> because maybe those that are seeking him are going to find you to help them find him. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, That's sir. true. So it's interesting we're on this this topic. Um, and I have a verse here I'm going to read to uh, add to this. To back up a little bit, uh, this past week we had to spend some time of all places in a courtroom uh, because of a uh, friend of ours, uh, some things in his life he was going through. Mm-hmm. And um, because of somebody who kind of had it out for him, let's say, there ended up being some very serious accusations, false mm-hmm. accusations, but accusations mm-hmm. nonetheless um, that were brought against him. And so he had asked us to come in and testify on his behalf uh, and for his character. And upon speaking with him over the phone while he was in jail, and of course he didn't understand why he was there. He would not committed any of the actions that he was being accused of. Um, I encouraged him to begin reading scripture. Now I'm happy to report that because of our testimony, he was released today and came by our offices to visit with us. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. And uh, he kind of threw tears saying, you know, I, I found a, a family I didn't know I have in you guys. He said, I've, I've, I began reading the Bible, like you said, and my favorite verse of all is Romans 12. Um, chapter of all, I should say, is Romans 12. So I'm going to start at verse 13. It says, contribute to the needs of God's people and welcome strangers into your home. Bless people who harass you. Bless and don't curse them. Be happy with those who are happy and cry with those who are crying. Consider everyone as equal and don't think that you are better than anyone else. Instead, associate with people who have no status. Hmm. Don't think that you are so smart. (laughs) Don't pay back anyone for their evil actions with evil actions, but show respect for what everyone else believes is good. If possible, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. I think that puts pretty plainly what we're... Hmm. uh, While we were talking here, I I remembered him talking about that chapter, and I kept hearing the Father go, go to verse 12, go to Romans 12, go to Romans 12. (laughs) So there it is, you know. Wow. I wish I could convey from the outside. I was not able to participate. I didn't have anything to contribute to that man's cause. And, um, but to see the joy in his face upon being released, it's just, if you've ever like, like, okay, what it it reminds you of where you were. It's a very shocking wake up of reminding you where you were in some of your darkest moments feeling that sense of joy and freedom of being released from whatever clutch that we're in and that joy that overcame, like we talked about last episode, the joy of the woman who found the lost coin, the joy of the sheep, knowing that it's finally back with the shepherd, all that, like, right. All that joy, just monumental immense, just, just gushing forth that you're like, uh, whatever day I, I was having is not important anymore. <laughs> this is amazing. It just yeah. really changes the entire character of your day. Mm-hmm. He said, uh, "How did he put it? He said I used to run around searching for things to calm my my stress and anxiety. He said that when it was in front of me all along, and it was the God who loves and cares for me. <laughs> wow, that was, yeah. Anyway, that's amazing. So another testimony um, of somebody finding their purpose. Yeah." Mm-hmm. That's so good. I got a few things um, that I'm just kind of rolling around in my head here. One is that, you know, we're talking about kind of the people who you can see on the surface their their filth. Um, you know, whether you know the the language, for instance. Um, but th- there's been times where I've been uh, in a coffee shop getting some coffee, and I the father tells me to buy the coffee for the person behind me. And I look behind me and I see a dude in like a well-dressed suit. And I'm like, that dude don't need me to buy his coffee. What you talking about? But uh, for one, it's, (laughs) it's not about how we see it. It's about the obedience to it, but also just realizing that, you know, what a dumb thing for me to think, you know, why would he, 
besides someone who looked a little less well-dressed not need the same love of God shown to him, you know, this absolutely random unmerited thing, you know, he didn't, he did nothing for me to want to do that, but there was no reason for me to think that. And so it's not about how we see on either side, you know, the well-dressed and the poorly dressed have issues all like we all have the issues. Um, The other thing is, you know, my wife and I have kind of struggled through some of these uh, topics because of trying to tie in our children to them because you know, you want to be lights to people. You want to uh, be what we're talking about. Be willing to be around that that person who has the language and, and such and all that kind of stuff. But it becomes a lot different, I think, when you have children. Because yeah. what would be appropriate for just my wife and I in ministry to someone would not be appropriate if my children were around. And so, you know, just to for anyone who's listening, like understanding that there are there are different ways to go about what we're talking about. It's not a one size fits all. Yep. It's about changing your perspective and how you see people and then looking for the opportunities that make sense for you and where God has you not trying to be someone else. He has you for a very specific purpose and a very specific testimony to some people. Um, and the last thing is <laughs> I get, I, I was observing this about myself recently as I was in a, a grocery store, I think, uh, after work, getting some some stuff before I went home, diapers. and yeah, diapers, cat food, also cat food, um, and probably milk. <laughs> but I was just walking around the store, and it's like late later in the week. I'm super tired, and just walking around, hoping that no one wants to talk to me, and hoping <laughs> that I could just get through the store. Oh no! Without having to interact with me, nothing happened. It was just like unfortunately you know it would it would have been one of those great times for god to send something but it was just something i was observing and i thought about it later you know what would yeshua do how would yeshua be thinking you know were my thoughts in that moment appropriate and in line with how yeshua would have thought probably not was i tired yes and was there a good reason for that yes but he was tired too he took on a human body that got exhausted and needed sleep. And yet people gave him no reprieve because he was the Messiah and because they needed him. And it just kind of woke me up to this just realization that if I want to be like my Messiah, I need to always be ready to minister to the lost sheep, regardless of my own feelings. And therefore I need to make sure that my face looks approachable. Wow. (laughs) Not like walking around. Not walk around with a scowl like, don't touch me, don't look at me, don't think about it. Yeah, you've gotten personal. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, You're right, Dan. I thought yeah. about the same thing there. there. I thought about that, too. It's like that. I know that that's a very real thing to feel like, oh, please don't let it be this. I know I've preached this, don't, but don't let it be tonight. I got things, that, there's things and stuff. And then yeah. that just check of, you sure about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You sure about I that? Just, I just want to be real. Like, you know, it's yep. uh, just because we can talk about it doesn't no. mean that we're always like ready for that. I've yeah. been exactly where you've been, Dan. I, I am not going to deny that. You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell, I'll tell you, I'll tell a story on uh, on Bill Cloud and Brad Scott. Uh, oh, Bill man. told this at Revive a couple years ago, right after uh, right after Brad had passed away. And uh, he told the story of going through an airport. And he said, uh, we're walking side by side and here's Brad with this smile on his face. And he's, he's got his zeet zeet and he's twirling him around, you know, off of his belt loops. And, <laughs> and, and Bill's like, man, why do you, why are you doing that? Somebody might ask you about that. He says, yeah, I want him to. And Bill's like, I don't want him to, I don't want to talk. And, and I mean, I relate more to Bill in that, than to, uh, you know, I can walk around a store and nobody says a word to me. Why? Because they 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 feel threatened by looking at me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so man. yeah, you got a little personal, uh, Daniel. <laughs> yes. That's, Sorry, that's no. Right. I had to do it. We were in mm-hmm. uh, we were in Longhorn last night. It was actually just uh, me and a friend of mine, Jaden. Hello, Jaden, if you're listening. Um, <laughs> and uh, we got gotten done with the meal and. 
we were talking about the time he had spent recently um, going around and praying for people. And so as we both stood up from the table, there was a, the restaurant was about to close and there was a waitress that was vacuuming the floor. And I felt the father be like, pray for that woman. Mm. And I was like, oh, I'm just, it's just because we're talking about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I went out and I got in the car and Jaden got in the car and he's telling me some more stories and stuff. And we're going up the road and they're now well past closed. The restaurant is. And uh, we get about halfway home and uh, he goes, I got to confess something. He's like, when I stood up from that table, the father told me to pray for that waitress that was vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you too, huh? And so he's like, you want to turn around? And I'm like, she, yeah, I do. So, I mean, right as he said that, I there was like a turn lane there. So I, I you know, banged a Yui and we headed back to Longhorn. And I'm thinking the doors are going to be locked. You know what I mean? This is going to be really, really awkward. That's like banging on the doors. Like, we got to speak to this waitress, you know? <laughs> She's, she would probably be thinking like, what did I do? Like, how bad was their order, you know? But no. Um, right as we pull up, this, this guy had come out. And one of the other waitresses had come out like to bring – something out the front to his car so and he left the door open so we like went in there and the rest of the wait staff like sees us come in but they don't say anything to us and she's still over there vacuuming and we walk up to her and uh Jaden is like uh, can we you excuse us we don't mean to bother you and we know this is kind of strange because it's like 11 o'clock at night now but um <laughs> we were in here and we felt strongly pressed by the spirit to pray for you and she shuts the vacuum off and she's like, to come pray for me? And we're like, yeah. And she goes, that's the wildest thing because she said, I quit my job. I was, I think she said she was making like 70000 a year at this job. She said, I wanted to spend more time with my husband, who's a police officer. So I took this job making, you know, a little over $2 an hour plus tips at long. Yeah. And she said, I come here, I'm a believer. And my prayer is every day, whose life can I change? Please put the tables before me that I need to affect so that I can show them who my king is. Amen. And that's just been my prayer every day. And then he sends you two in here to pray for me, to encourage me. And I just, that was just like, <laughs> wow. Never know who, yep. who or where, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I we were that. just blown away. <laughs> that's awesome. You know? Well done. Well done going back. So. You never know how much it will invigorate you when you just oh, listen yeah. to that voice that's, that just pops up. And you're like, no, I, I can reason. I can logically reason this away. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Not every encounter is going to be as nice as that. But you know what? <laughs> it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. It's mm -hmm. worth it trying. Worth it. yeah. It's so worth it. Because guess what? If not, yeah. all right. Is it, is it worth it if you get it only one out of 99 times? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stop it. Stop doing that. <laughs> stop doing that, Daniel. Stop doing that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, uh, you, can't, you cast the lure out 99 times, and you, you're like, I'm going to quit. And then, then you catch a fish the next one. It's like, okay, 99 more. I got it. Go. Yeah. I can yep. do this again. Yeah, wow. It's all worth it. That's good. Well, you know, we talked about this a number of weeks ago. I, I did, uh, and um, or somewhere along the way in in 26 episodes now i thought last week was 26 and then i figured out it was 25 so um whatever uh that you know you guys have heard me talk about in in our young adult services you know how many how many of you want to be used by god and you know everybody's mm -hmm. like yeah 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 and i said don't don't do that again god doesn't <laughs> want to use you he wants to flow through you yeah and, and that's that's what we're talking about folks is the father for in the midst of creation he desire it, it's a it's a uh it, it's a cooperation you know a lot of times on shabbat we'll say the blessing you know uh, of blessed are you lord our god king of the universe who brings forth bread from the earth um you know i've never seen anybody walk out into a um you know like like you know dave's uh field out there, you know, and get Dave's bread over there. And there's the sunbeam field and there's the wonder bread field. And you walk out and you get it off of, you know, you pick it up and it's got the little cellophane thing. No, the, even, even the thing of, be, of bread, it's about cooperation is that God mm -hmm. gives us ground and he gives us seed and he gives us the water 
and he gives us the the abilities and when in the end who brings forth bread from the earth we turn around and give him all the credit for everything though we did all the work <laughs> but he gets the credit because yeah. it's for his namesake and that's just the the wonderful idea the concept of allowing him to work through us so that he can receive glory mm -hmm. amen to that and the idea i wanted to work off that too michael that the idea of you're giving him all the credit after you going through and doing these things we just talked about just quite a few testimonies we just kind of just talked about now they're just so amazing and it's always that you always are giving credit back but you just get to be a part of it and you're not you're not left with nothing he never has you work for free there's something received on the other end of that if, if you guys think about all the times you've ever done that and or what did you think mike i don't think you really got the, the chance to explain that when you were just doing a hobby that you enjoy that one man then changed his language because of what you had been there the presence of what you've done and then what did it make you like okay i did not expect that mm -hmm. this is amazing there's an opportunity here and that it doesn't have to be a one-time thing those are always amazing but it could be a multiple time deal that the act of you showing up is a is a, a really a lot and it's that maybe even discipleship to a point not exactly i know there's a little bit more definition there a little bit more to it than that Open but door. sometimes you just have to just continue to be there continue to be there continue to keep showing up and like you said oh not this guy again not this oh. <laughs> and i i think every one of us has been there there's those certain people you're like no not this person again but it, it's okay you continue to keep going being like you talked about brad scott may rest in peace again like that idea of just <laughs> shaking around and seat just because i want people to say something it's okay to be weird mm -hmm. <laughs> just being different yeah i love that line for the chosen just get used to it get used <laughs> so to different you're yeah. getting yeah, yeah get used to different that was such an amazing line and that's one i think of all the lines in that movie that was one of the best it was so great i love that mm -hmm. yeah I, 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 the pregnant pause here, you know, just to mm -hmm. consider the the whole concept. I, I, I don't I, I don't know if I've ever really been able to get over this, that those moments in life when the father actively works through you to affect someone else's life. There's no dollar figure you can put on that. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's really nothing. I mean, and, and then you try to explain it to most people around you and they're like, huh? You know, they, they kind of look at you like, you know, the, the proverbial uh, cow looking at a new gate. And if you've never seen that, go, go try one. It's, it's just like, what's that? Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's the way that most people look at it. But, but for those that have been there, I mean, talk about something you want to get addicted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people getting addicted on, you know, to adrenaline rushes, doing whatever they can, skydiving and, uh, you know, bungee jumping, all this stuff. The, the adrenaline rush you get from the Holy Spirit coursing through you, affecting others, and, you know, you see the absolute evidence of it. It is, I mean, it's exhilarating. Mm -hmm. And it's humbling it's humbling and exhilarating there's so many yeah. feelings in that moment mm -hmm. where you just get to be it's like i, I don't know if there's any better moment to understand how someone can be content not being the one on the stage mm -hmm. it's it's such a moment of knowing that you're part of something much bigger than yourself and being humbled and honored to be a part of it and not mm -hmm. needing to be any more than that yeah okay when you just said be the one on the stage you're not talking about a physical stage are you i'm not no nope. okay so are, are we talking about like the 
kind of kind of this you know it's like the father says okay i'm going to put you in this prominent place and, and i'm going to make you the center of attention of angelic principalities as you become the the piece of pipe that i'm going to flow through right now and, and the mm -hmm. heavenly realm is going to stop for a moment just to watch this miracle happen Yeah, I've often I've often wondered um, at how for you know, people go through life wanting to make a name for themselves, and mm -hmm. they do whatever necessary to make a name for themselves, not knowing that the very acts which they are committing to make a name for themselves will end the, end them up in the grave with no life on the other side of it. <laughs> and yet, for us to make a name for ourselves, we throw our name to the side and put it under the name of Yeshua. And that is what actually gives us a name and the only place that matters having a name. Mm -hmm. it, I would say it kind of, uh, for me, it compares to that idea of in class and the, and the teacher's like, who's wants to solve this problem? And no one wants to get up. No one wants to get up and do it. So then the teacher has to actually point out to someone to come and do it. Because you're so afraid of messing up the, like in math class, you're messing up the equation, messing up something. And it's just, and it's totally normal to feel that way. We all have felt that. But there's this guide that happens inside you, which is the Holy Spirit. There's a guide that just starts to come and just starts to just nudge you in the right direction. And before you know it, that muscle is getting exercised. The more and more you do it, the more and more you realize, oh, I know exactly how I have where I need to do to bring and uplift my father in this situation. And if you just focus on that, it's just, it kind of lays itself out before you. It's, it's, that's, it seems so simple. It really, really is. I mean, it really is just that simple. So you're absolutely right about that, Daniel. But Ryan, on the other hand, with, you know, something you talked about a number of weeks ago is when you become addicted to it being your name. Mm-hmm. Mm how do, how do we, you've been on platforms, stages uh, more often than, than probably any of us. Um, how do you keep it from becoming, wow, this is about me instead of you're, you're just kind of letting, you're letting that flow through there, there. It is you, but then you're figuring out, yeah, it's me so that I can point them to him. How, how do you, how do you do this? I think the only way I can kind of phrase this is I look back at, at my life and at the things that I've experienced. And I realize that oftentimes those happenings wouldn't have taken place if it weren't for those, the little moments of people showing up or I decided to say yes to this or I decided to go here and perform this activity or learn this instrument or do, you know what I mean? Yeah. These, the, the little seeds that were planted, a friend of mine and I were talking about this recently, like you feel like the father tells you to do something and so you do it and it seems totally kind of insane at the time that you do it. But then because you performed that, act, that action, it changes lives, right? So like in the case of this friend, uh, he's actually the, our producer that has produced all of our Exodus Road CDs. He built the studio in his own words, giant money hole. Why am I doing this? <laughs> right. As far as I'm concerned, had I not gone, had he not done that, we wouldn't have had a studio for me to then be called to, to even be part of a band, a band to then meet my wife. Yeah. You know, to then meet you guys, to then be on this podcast, right? Yeah. So when you start to look at it from that direction, when you start to look back at everything that's that's gone on, and you realize how little of it, how little of your life you actually were a part of in the making of, <laughs> if you will, <laughs> there's a I think there's a line of humility that comes in there when you realize that you really are just the vessel that the Father's using, and he mm -hmm. he's got his your steps planned for you. So you kind of just get out of the way and be like, I am here right now and I couldn't be here without you. I can't go forward without you. You know, pl please take over. 
I've told Dave, there's many times, if I, and I still feel this way, if I could on the stage, like wear like a special hat and like glasses or whatever, and then be able to like get done and then like change my appearance instantly and then just go out and be with people. I'd rather do that because I don't want to be the guy that everybody's like, oh my God, you know, that was so wonderful to hear you, you know, because it's not about me. It's about what the father's doing. It's about bringing in that spirit of worship. That I hope that answers the question. But mm -hmm. Okay, but let me throw a verse at you okay. with that. Uh, here's Isaiah 56. Uh, this is verse four. For here is what Adonai says: As for those who keep my shabbats, who hold what please, who who choose what pleases me, and hold fast to my covenant in my house within my walls, I will give them power and a name greater than the sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. Yeah. So is it wrong for us to think that the Father truly does want to give us a name, a place of prominence, a, a position that, mm -hmm. that that is, you know, I mean, isn't it what you do with it in the end? Mm -hmm. yeah. I 100%, I, I you know, and that's why I was trying to articulate earlier where for us to make a name for ourselves, the best thing to do is submit our name under Yeshua. And that is what gives us both a name in the kingdom and used properly a name today. Here's, here's one question that kind of answered this question for me. Why on earth should the most famous people in the world be people who do not glorify God? Why should the most influential people influential people in the world be people who despise God and reject him the most rich people the most you know all this thing and this is not by any means like trying to be a prosperity gospel thing mm -hmm. it's just a question why should the most influential people in the world be non-believers mm. and in that perspective God wants to make his name great he wants to make his name known on the earth and how is that going to happen if we do not submit our names under him and receive the power and the name that comes from him. Yes. So, so is, is the, the concept of humility that has been preached and taught, is that concept a lie of the enemy to hold us down, Daniel? Hundred percent. And my fate one of my favorite C.S. Lewis quotes is humility is not thinking less of oneself, but thinking of oneself less. Mm -hmm. You you know who you are. You just know you should not be dwelling on yourself. This reminds was... me of um I took a, a land nav, a short land nav course recently. Um and part of that course was you know the idea of traveling to a fixed point and really the key of it is once you have your bearing is to pick an object on the horizon mm -hmm. and keep your focus on that object so that you go in a straight line and you're not walking in circles because one leg yeah. shorter than the other yeah you know and kind of to that point of uh, like c.s lewis is saying as you're traveling if you're looking at your feet instead of looking where you're going, where you're headed, that's when you get lost. When you're so focused on yourself and, and you know, what your next step is, that's when you get turned around. And so, you know, as cliche as it may be to say this in some sense, keeping up Yeshua as that fixed point that we walk toward. And when we meet those who are saying, you know, well, where are you traveling? Where are you going? There, that's my, that's my point. That's who I'm looking at. That's well. Why do you do the things you're doing? Because I'm traveling there. Yeah. That's when we make the destination. You know. There you go. There you go. There's that idea of humbling in my mind that we've been kind of also hitting at it too, with especially like, oh, I don't want to do. I don't want to. I really need to just get in here, get something quick, and just get back. I just gotta like write because man, I would like recently. That's very fresh for me. Humbling yourself is also realizing you got to put yourself like your needs. Okay. Hey, 
there's actually a greater purpose here. We subsided a little bit and real recognizing that don't cower from that. Like, well, I'm just going to just stay back. I'm just not going to do anything. Actually, you know, there's actually a better example at Revive. We all saw that of, of young people that they could have just, well, I'm kind of, I'm at like the bottom of this age range. I'm like, I just, just barely got into this thing. I probably should just sit back and be quiet and just listen. They did it. Yeah. <laughs> right? They they broke past that wall, that invisible wall, and they caused something to happen in that room that none of us were like, what just happened? <laughs> it was really, really amazing. That's what we're talking about, that idea of, okay, you're staying humble. Okay, great. You're staying back, but don't, don't allow that to then just freeze you. It'll right. get out push forward, yeah. push out. And with under his name, he'll take care of the rest. There you go. Yep. You know, the, the verse, uh, David, what you, or uh, yeah, Ryan, um, the verse in Hebrews chapter 12, not Romans, but Hebrews, looking unto Yeshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured an execution stake and is seated at the right hand of the Father. We are the joy that is set before him. He's given us our life. He, he's given us everything. And all he says is, just let me flow through it for my glory. What a concept, right? What a concept. <laughs> That's right. Hmm. Well, guys, I hope that uh, something, oh, those of you that are listening, watching, I hope that something we've said tonight challenges you. Uh, speaking of Revive, registration is open. It is the weekend yes. prior to July 4th right. at the Marriott Cool Springs in uh, outside of beautiful Franklin, Tennessee, not Franklin, North Carolina. And um, we have a special going on this year that uh, it looks like the four of us at least and we might even have a special guest i haven't told you guys Maybe. this have i no i haven't heard mm. about the special guest <laughs> we may even have a special guest to show up at at least one of the three young adult services that we're going to be doing amazing mr barry phillips oh all right, right. sweet yeah yep. That so that just kind of adds a little bit more of a touch to it. And uh, so anybody that's in anywhere, just, just make it to revive. We are going to have a great time. We have, for those of you that were there last year, we had this little room of about 70 that we put a hundred and something in this year. We have a, a room that seats 200 and we don't use chairs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, get on there and get, uh, get, get signed up for that closing thoughts real quick. Round their board. I got nothing. Got nothing. Got nothing. Be David's okay with being yeah. Oh, I always got something. Be yeah. okay with being uncomfortable and just be. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's okay. Just try. That's all you got to do. There you go, Ryan. And the more you do it, the better you'll become at it. So don't be wow. afraid. Yeah practice yeah. might just you might just get oh, addicted right that's if right y'all we've we've all talked about testimonies if you have a testimony too, send us an email on purpose mm -hmm. at at mail.com yeah we yeah, would love to do. hear it we'd love to find out about it if you also have anything you're struggling with or if you have anything that you would like to talk talk to us about maybe even a topic that has you struggle yes. with please send it to us we would love to know what's uh yeah. bugging you in a way or something amazing that's happened to you we love to hear because it's always amazing there you go what he's talking about is we'd like to know about those plans that he has for you plans for good <laughs> and not for evil yes, sir. to give you life and purpose so live your life on purpose see you guys next week we'll see you see you, see ya. you alone hear my every prayer you're the god who's always there